2008, just days after our second son was born, our home and every earthly possession we had was reduced to a pile of ashes in a raging wildfire. We had a toddler, a 10 day old, and no money. We were homeless, standing in line at the Red Cross with only the clothes on our backs, a newborn in hand, and desperately searching for an explanation for our young son. <clears throat> the weeks, months, and years to follow were very difficult. It was as if there had been a death of the life I had known and the person I had been. On top of those feelings, we had to spend the next six months recounting every detail of every item that was lost, compiling a list of where we bought it, how much it cost, everything, and almost daily going to battle with our insurance company. It took a few years to get back on our feet. Seven years later, I am still living with daily reminders of what was lost. As time went by, though, I could begin to see the beauty in this new beginning, feeling less like a victim and a little bit more like the recipient of a gift. Having been completely struck down allowed me to experience human kindness, compassion, and generosity on a personal level that most people will never see in their lifetime. There are people in this room, this is where I'll try not to tear up, <laughs> who replaced precious items from my baby registry and bought me socks and underwear because they knew that I didn't have the time or capacity to think about myself. Some of the most touching moments came from the generosity of complete strangers. When I look back on this time, much of it seems like a blur, and I realized that there was a lot of self-preservation going on. I was living my life very much on the surface so that I didn't have to let go of the pretty and actually face some of the ugly that was really going on. I developed rehearsed answers and repeated them over and over when asked questions about how we were doing, so that I didn't really have to go there and share all of the details. Don't get me wrong, I was happy most of the time, but there was a small emptiness inside of me. And I feared that it might get bigger if something didn't change, but I didn't know what that was. Life before the fire was fairly charmed, to be honest. It was the comfort and ease of my life had lured me into a false reliance on my own strength. Life felt, for the most part, predictable and certain at that time, and I loved that. <laughs> I realize now that the certainty and security that I clung so tightly to in my old life had actually become the greatest deterrent to living my life to the fullest. I had been living a risk-free faith. I knew all about God because I was brought up in a Christian family and I went to a Christian college, but I didn't actually know God. So having my tidy little life turned upside down and shaken like a snow globe brought me to a place where I needed to test that out. I felt at times like I was watching life from the outside. I recall having the urge to do something meaningful, but being too afraid and not even having a clue where to start. After I'd been simmering on these feelings for a while, John Ireland invited my husband and I to do the Purpose Driven Life book study with him a few years back. I remember reading that book and feeling like there was a person inside of me wanting to be born, but she scared me a little. I knew that she was very different. She would not be invisible. She would be more than just an observer. But I wondered if this person would ever really come to be. The ordinary person I had worked so hard to be was being threatened by the person I so desperately longed to be. I was wrestling with my own identity, but I was actually enjoying the struggle. God was preparing me for something, but what? Then, one Sunday, a crazy charismatic man from World Vision <laughs> came to speak at Ocean Hills laying down an invitation to help bring an end to the number one killer in Africa, the clean water crisis. He was asking us to run a marathon. I had never done this before. But before I knew it, 
Before I knew what I was doing, I found myself walking forward at the end of the service to sign up. I had a one, four, and seven-year-old at home, and I hadn't even asked my husband. <laughs> but God was dragging me down that aisle. I think the reason I was compelled to do this is because of the fire. I know what it feels like to have no choice but to accept the benevolence of strangers. I also know how beautiful it is to see the best humanity has to offer in moments of need. Because of this, I said yes to being a voice for those whose needs are much greater than you or I could ever imagine. I couldn't fathom what it would feel like to not be able to provide the most basic necessity for survival for my own children. So I said I can run. <laughs> but the scariest thing about this yes wasn't the months and months of training ahead. It wasn't the many miles it would take to accomplish it. It was that it wasn't something I could attempt quietly. I had to tell everyone I knew about it. I had to step out and publicly say that I would no longer be a sideliner. I was going to do something meaningful. Shaking in my boots, I did so. But Jesus was at the wheel and I began a journey that has changed my life. A quote that I love by Erwin Raphael McManus is, God clarifies in the midst of obedience, not beforehand. He showed up for me at every turn, clarifying things through the process. One of the wonderful things about stepping out on the journey with God is that it's full of surprises. I had the honor this past June of traveling to Kenya with World Vision to see the impact this Clean Water Initiative is having on the communities receiving it. I had never seen or felt the presence and light of God so strongly as I did in the people that I met there. They had very, very little to their name and were living in the margins day to day, and yet they had everything. Not a day goes by that I don't think of them and the lessons that they taught me. I think that a divine chain of events happened in my life as part of his gracious plan for my spiritual growth. Challenging times wake you up and heighten your awareness of needing his help. The shift for me occurred when I made a choice to change my perspective. I decided I wanted my life to be defined by what I give. So many precious moments are lost by looking only for what we can get. The magic, the sweetest moments in life happen when we are willing to serve with our hands open. Jesus says it best in Luke 9, 24. When you try to keep your life, you lose it. But when you lose your life for his sake, you actually find it. I'd like to share a personal prayer that I read almost daily from a book called The Diary of Private Prayer. Lord, grant me the grace to throw open all the doors of my heart. Let me draw back every bolt and bar that has robbed my life of life and love. Open my ears, O oh God, so that I can hear your voice calling me to attempt great things. Too often, when you have spoken to me, I have been deaf to your appeals. But now give me the courage to answer. Here I am. Send me. Help me hear when any of your children call out in need. Help me hear your voice in their cry. Open my mind, O oh God, so that I welcome any new insight or knowledge that you wish to give me. May I not cling to the past so tightly that I limit the life ahead of me. Give me the courage to change my mind when that is needed. Help me to be tolerant to the thoughts of others and open to the truths that they may teach me. Open my eyes so that I may see you and your wonderful creation around me. Let all beautiful things fill my heart with joy and turn my mind to your everlasting love. Open my hands to serve. Hands ready to share with others all the blessings you have so richly given me. Deliver me from all selfish instincts. All of my possessions belong to you. Help me to be a faithful steward of your generosity. God ignited a light within me through serving others. He made use of me even at my weakest and in turn strengthened me along the way. No matter where you are on your journey today, whether you are sinking or soaring, 
My wish for you this Christmas season is that you may see the light that Jesus brought to this earth to shine into your dark places and allow him to make you brave through it. When you move with God, he always shows up.